everyone, it's Sarah, and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to crochet these cute little leprechaun hats. Now, they measure about three inches by three inches. They're not very big. They do fit your little dogs and cats, and also the American Girl dolls. They're also lots of fun for decorating on your St. Patrick's Day or if you're having a party, it's a lot of fun to set these around or go ahead and wear them yourself for a fun, fun time. I love them. We've made them for many years and we decided to update the pattern and add the little braids so you would know how to add them to your hat if you want them for a little extra pop of color. Now you can find this free crochet pattern on my blog as usual. And I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. To make our little leprechaun hat, you're going to, of course, need some yarn. And I'm just using some Red Heart Super Saver or any medium weight, worsted weight, number four acrylic yarn. You, of course, can use any medium weight, number four yarn for this project. It doesn't take very much, just a few ounces of each color. I'm going to be doing the demonstration in this bright green for the hat, this bright yellow for the buckle, and of course black for the hat band. And then I have this rust orange that I'm going to show you how to do the little orange braids if you want those on your hat. I think they're fun. They add a little pop of extra color. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle for weaving in your ends and sewing on your buckle and you'll need a pair of scissors. Now if you're going to do the braid you might want to grab your handy dandy ruler. It makes it a lot easier when you're trying to measure out a long piece of yarn um, to do that on a ruler opposed to a tape measure. But of course your tape measure would work as well. We're going to begin with our slip knot and we're going to chain five chains. One, two, three, four, and five. We're going to join this chain five into a circle. So we'll grab the tail of our yarn, put it over our hook, and pull that through. We'll snug that down and just add that little stay knot. Now, if you prefer to use a magic circle for this first row, you certainly can. All right, so we're going to put our hook in, pull up a loop, and chain three. And this chain three counts as our first double crochet. We're going to double crochet nine more around this chain five circle. And as we do that, we're going to stitch over our tail of yarn. So yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, and go through the second two loops. So that we have our chain three, which counts as our first, and we have one more, so we need to do eight more. All right, let's see how many I've done and if it's enough. Here's our chain three, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need to do one more. All right, so that makes 10. I'm going to join to my chain three with a slip stitch. So I'll go in, pull that loop, and then pull that loop through the loop that's on my hook, and I'm going to go ahead and chain three. Now, the reason that we went ahead and stitched over that tail of yarn is now I just need to pull that closed, move my thumb here, and we can go ahead and take our needle and we can weave that in. The center of our hat or the top of our uh, top hat is closed. We won't have that hole and we'll just weave that in. There we go. We'll go ahead and cut that yarn and that's taken care of. We don't have to worry about that later. And so we have 10 
double crochets for the center, we joined and chained three for row one. For row two, we're going to be placing two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. Our chain three counted as our first, and so we'll put another stitch right in that same stitch. And then we'll place two double crochets in each of those nine that are left, double crochets around. And so since we're putting two in each, we started with 10 and we're going to have 20 double crochets. So I'm placing two double crochets in each of the 10 double crochets around and then I'll join back to my chain three. Whoops, <laughs> it does slide off your hook sometimes. <laughs> All righty, so I'll continue stitching those two double crochets in each stitch, working all the way around and join back to my chain three. I've placed two double crochets in each of those 10 double crochets around, so now I have 20 double crochets. I'm going to join to my chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. All right, now for row three, we're going to be doing this a little bit different. We're going to stitch one double crochet in the next three and then two double crochets in the next. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet, so we'll double crochet in the next two. And then we'll stitch two double crochets in the next stitch. One and two. And this is our repeat working around for row three. One double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three, and then two double crochets in the next, one and two. And we'll repeat this working all the way around for row three. And of course, we'll join back to that chain three at the beginning. Oops, there we go. There's one and two. One double crochet in the next three and then two double crochets in the next. Repeat, join back to our chain three. I have completed row three, stitching one double crochet in the next three and then two double crochets in the next. I joined to my chain three and chained three. And now for row four, we're going to stitch one double crochet in each double crochet, but we're going to be stitching in the back loops only. So if you look at the top of your row of stitches, you'll see that there are loops on the front and loops on the back. This loop here that's on the front is called your front loop. That's the loop that's always facing you. The loop that's on the back is called, of course, the back loop, and that's the loop that's always facing away from you. So we're going to stitch our double crochets, one in each stitch, stitching in the back loop only. So yarn over, we'll go in our next stitch, stitching in the back loop only, stitching double crochets. One double crochet in each stitch, stitching in the back loop only. And as you work around, you'll notice that there is a little line that forms right here and those are those loops we didn't work in. And the reason we're doing it this way is this is going to help our top hat have a nice edge. All right, so one double crochet in each double crochet around, stitching in the back loops only, working all the way around till we reach back to that chain three. I've completed row four, stitching one double crochet in each stitch around, stitching in the back loops only, and you can see that line right there, and that just gives us a nice crisp line to make the top of our hat look nice and even. 
All right, I joined to my chain three and chained three. Now for row five, we're not going to be stitching in the back loops anymore on this project. We're just going to stitch one double crochet in each double crochet around. And again, we're going to have 25 double crochets because we're not adding or subtracting any stitches. So just to repeat, no more back loop only. We're just stitching one double crochet in each of those double crochet stitches around and then we'll join back to our chain three. I've completed this row of one double crochet in each double crochet around. I joined to my chain three and chained three. And so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat row five two more times. I've completed those two additional rows of one double crochet in each stitch around, join, and then one double crochet in each stitch around and join. Now for this row, we're not going to chain three after our join because we're going to add in that black for our hat band. So I'm going to go ahead and join in my black. And I'm going to leave my green yarn still attached because we're only doing one row of the black and then we're going to finish the hat with the green. So I have joined in my black and I'm going to chain three. Now I normally don't uh, do the videos with black yarn just because it's just really hard to see. But I'm only doing one row, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. Our chain three here counts as our first double crochet, and we're going to just repeat what we've been doing and stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets around. So basically, we're again just repeating row five. One double crochet in each of the double crochets around. Then we'll join back to our first chain three and then we'll change back to our green yarn. We're just stitching one row of the black for our hat band and I apologize for it being hard to see but I wanted you to see how it was going to work. I completed that row of one double crochet in each double crochet with the black. I've joined to my chain three and we're going to cut off that black yarn. And we'll weave that in after a bit, but we're going to go ahead and bring back in our green yarn, snug everything down. There we go. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and chain three. Always remember when changing colors um, to do that chain three after your color change or you'll end up with one stitch that's the wrong color. For instance, if I was doing my black row and I went ahead and did my chain three in green, I would have one stitch right here that was green. And the same thing with this row, I would have this stitch in black and it wouldn't look as neat. Alrighty, now for row nine, because that's where we're at now, what we're going to do is we're going to stitch two double crochets in the next stitch. Our chain three counts as one, and then we're stitching two in the next. And the way the repeat is going to work for this row is we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next stitch and two double crochets in the next. And this is going to make the band of our hat or the brim of our hat stand out. So it looks like that leprechaun hat. One double crochet in the next, two double crochets in the next, and repeat working all the way around our hat. I call that doing one and two. And again, I've said this many times, it's not a technical term, it just helps me remember what I'm supposed to be doing. One double crochet in the next, and two double crochets in the next, 
and repeat this working all the way around the brim of our hat and then we'll join back to our chain three. I've completed row nine and you can see how the hat band already forms that brim of the hat. All right, so we just have one more row to do. I join to my chain three and we're just going to chain one. And our last row here, row 10, we're just going to stitch one single crochet in each of those double crochets around. We go in, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through both loops. One single crochet in each of the double crochets around. Then we'll join back to our very first single crochet. We'll tie off, weave in our end, and then I'll show you how to make the buckle and the braids. I've completed that row of single crochets all the way around the edge of my hat. I'm going to join to the first single crochet with a slip stitch. I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to go in the next stitch and pull that loop to the inside. There we go. And we'll tie off to the inside. And I think that just gives the edge just a little bit neater of an appearance. And yes, we have to come in and weave in a few ends. All right, so there's our hat. And now it needs a buckle. To make the buckle, I'm using a yellow yarn. You can use gold or whatever color you want your buckle to be. We're going to begin with our slip knot. <laughs> And we're going to chain 13 chains. We're going to place a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. We'll place a single crochet in the next. And then we'll place two single crochets in the next one and two. Now we'll place one single crochet in the next two. One, two, and then two single crochets in the next. One and two. And then we'll repeat that. One single crochet in the next two, and two single crochets in the next. One and two. one single crochet in the next two, one and two, and then we end with two single crochets in the last stitch. Looks a little curly, doesn't it? We're going to take this end and we're going to join to that first single crochet. Make sure you grab the right end there. All right, we're gonna tie off but we're going to leave ourselves a good amount of yarn, about 12 to 18 inches, so we can sew that in place. We'll go ahead and go in the next stitch and pull that loop to the back and tie off to the back. All right, now you'll notice you might have a little gap right there. What we're going to do is we're going to grab our needle and get that tail of yarn where we started and just make sure that that is a nice connection and just stitch a little stitch in there and pull it over. We have to tie this off anyway so we might as well put it to use. Alright so there's our buckle. We'll go ahead and tie this one off. So I'm going to go through a couple more stitches just to get it in there. There we go. And we'll clip that piece of yarn off. That's our tail we started with. So now here is our little buckle. And we're going to thread that on our needle and we're going to sew it on our hat. Now here's the back of our hat. A lot of people like to put that buckle right there. I really prefer to put it on the front. Alright, so I'm going to kind of flatten that out a little bit. Center my buckle on. I'm going to go underneath and come up and I'm just going to hold that with my thumb. And I'm going to follow these stitches on the outside. 
Now, this is not going to be getting a lot of use. It's more for decoration, unless, of course, you put it on your cat or dog. But for the most part, that buckle is going to stay in place. So just a row of stitches around the outside is probably all that you need to keep it on there. Now, if you want to add more stitches, you certainly can. I like to kind of shape it as I go to make sure the corners are where they need to be and that it lays nicely. Sometimes I'll go forward, sometimes I'll go backwards. It just depends how it's laying. And I'll usually continue to go around until I run out of yarn. And I always have too much yarn, but I figure might as well, right? Especially if you're going to put this on your pet or your child's going to play with it because it does fit an American Girl doll as well. All right, I think that's good. So I'm going to go inside and just weave that in. I'm going to make sure that I weave it in underneath the buckle because I don't want my yellow stitches to show. All right, I'll go ahead and clip that. All right, so there is my hat, kind of squished up there. There we go, with my yellow buckle. And I want to show you how to add those orange braids if you want them. This is the hat that we just made, and this is the one that I made previously. And I went ahead and added one of the braids, and I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to need to measure out three pieces of yarn that are about 18 inches or longer. And I like using this big plastic ruler. I got this at Hobby Lobby, and it has 18 inches on it, and I really like it. Alrighty, now I've got my three cut. I'm going to fold those in hat in half, <laughs> not hat. And then I'm going to try to line it up with the one I have here. And I like to try to line it up on the side as best that I can. And then I'm going to put my hook through one of the stitches where there are two. And I like to do that just because it's going to help it stay on there better. Alright, so I'm putting my hook through those stitches. I'm going to grab those three right there and pull that through. All right, and then I'm just going to pull through just three of them so that we've got them like this. All right, let me move that one out of the way. And that's going to hold underneath the hat. It might show a little, but not very much. All right, then we're going to braid those. And what I like to do is I like to take one from each side and put them together like this. And there we go, like this. I just think it makes a much stronger braid. And we're just going to braid those. We're not going to braid them real tightly, just a little bit loose. We want it to kind of look like orange braided hair that maybe a little Irish girl or boy might have. I guess you don't have to be a child. It could be an adult, right? <laughs> and I'm just braiding those down. Now, I already have one here, so I want to kind of make sure that they're going to be about the same size and length. And then once I get the braid as long as I want it, I'm just going to tie a knot like this. Flip that through there. And I don't snug it down just yet. I want to make sure that I've got it a little more even. There we go. And then I'll tighten that up. I'll put those together and cut it the same. There we go. And there's the two cute little braids. And so here's how you make this fun little decorative leprechaun hat. You can make it with or without the braids, and it's still a lot of fun to use to decorate with. They also fit your American Girl dolls, and if you have little dogs like mine, they fit them too, and the kitties love it also. <laughs> Whatever you want to do with your little leprechaun hat, just make sure you have fun. <laughs>